Okay. okay. Thank you, Joy. I'm sorry, I jumped the gun a little bit. I apologize for uh, uh, stepping in too quickly there. Uh, so uh, for the record, uh, I'm Kirsten Lorscher and I am present. Whoa. Sorry, Devon. Um, sorry. Paul, you wanna go next? Uh, I'm sorry, Paul Hickok. Marie? Marie Gavazzi, uh, trustee. Evelyn? Evelyn Greenstein, trustee. Joy, do you want to announce yourself? Sure, I'm Joy Chard. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we, I did send out a draft agenda earlier, uh, and then uh, we, if, we, if people are okay with that, we'd move through the agenda, and then I have a few attachments <clears throat> about the HSR that we can refer to as we get to that. Are people okay with that approach? No objections? Okay. Um, I know, we've, uh, Marie, you've been sort of maintaining a capital grant summary uh, and doing updates of that. Is there anything you'd like to update us on for that uh, summary? I don't think I have anything new to report. It looks like the last time it was updated was April 24th. So that may just may have just been after the building committee to record what had been discussed in the building committee. Okay, thank you. Uh, at the uh, Lansenburg branch, the 2019 Library Construction Award, we have the Cupola project. And I know TAP had been working on some bid documents. Uh, is there any update on that to report? Uh, yes, uh, bids have been sent out. Uh, the due date uh, for response is uh, June 8th. Um, the bid documents have been sent to specifically um, four or five contractors, uh, Roush Brothers, uh, Greco's Construction, Duncan Cahill, Music Valley, and Hilltop Construction. And I'm sorry, I, 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 I got Roush, uh, Duncan Cahill, um, Hilltop. Oh, Roush Brothers, uh, Greco Construction. Yeah. Uh, Duncan Cahill. Yep. Hoosick Valley. Oh, that's it. And Hilltop Construction. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, however, um, we've sort of been cautioned that contractors are really busy. And uh, they're short of workers. So uh, we're hopeful that we get a good response by the 8th. Um, also, uh, Kirsten, if you know anyone else, uh, any other general contractors that might be good, um, you can let us know. Certainly, I, I, I think you've got a great bunch here, uh, five different guys. I've worked with four of the five and had good success. The, the fifth one I, I'm not familiar with, but I. I've not heard bad things about them. So I think that's a good sign. And, and we're hearing similarly that there is a lot of uh, work going on. Uh, we're starting to see some price inflation going on. We did have, uh, for my office, we have bid three different projects over the past six weeks. Uh, we got strong participation on all those projects. We bid one project on Wednesday this week uh, where we had uh, five or six GCs bidding it, uh, Duncan Cahill being one of those. Uh, uh, Duncan Cahill came in second, so I know they're still looking for work. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. This is a pretty small project, so I don't know if that makes a difference, you know, it, whether they can say there's not enough in it for them. I don't know. Um, I guess we'll see, you know, how the results are. Uh, uh, play out. Yeah, the, the, the one that uh, we got on Wednesday, the GC contract was, uh, I think, three point seven million dollars for the GC contract. So yeah. uh, we were, well, we're still, we're seeing a lot of interest across the board. The interesting thing was in the last bid set we got, there was there were zero. I excuse me, there was one plumber who bid the project. Yeah. Besides <laughs> that, 
right. um, all the other prime contracts. We've got a lot of participation. Uh, we are hearing that prices are going up. Yeah. Uh, and we hear that timelines are going out too. So we have uh, heard that roofing materials that used to be available in a few weeks are now uh, roofing insulation is saying six months to get materials on site. Well, I'm not saying that prices are going up, just that the timelines are going out further. Well, I, I, uh, I expressed that our timeline, our goal is uh, August 31st to get this done. So. Uh, August 31st of this year. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that, that is uh, uh, ambitious. That's, you know, that's the height of construction season that we may, uh, yeah. if we don't get much participation, we may want to look and see if we can extend the construction period perhaps. And maybe uh, we can- we, we already did that. It has been extended a year. Um, so it would be, you know, drop dead date would be July uh, 2022. Got it. So, but I'd like to get this thing done and out of the way, you know, this year. Well, you may, you may want to poll the bidders, see if they're interested, see if they have any um, thoughts on the timeline. And if extending that timeline Within this year, maybe instead of being August, maybe if you were to extend out to November yeah, first or something like that, you may find you may get a little more uh, interest, perhaps. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're we're gonna do that. Um, I just talked to Lisa today, and uh, you know we're gonna talk about that uh, with the uh, with the bidders. Okay, good, good. Well, good luck with it. Thank you for the update. I appreciate it. Um, we've talked about. Uh, uh, 20, 200th anniversary uh, event or, or uh, some sort of uh, acknowledgement of that event. Uh, and we talked about potentially doing a plaque at Lansingburg with the Lansingburg Historical Society. And, and Maria, I think you had said that uh, you were in communication with the friends on that and with uh, the Lansingburg Historical Society. Are there any updates on that piece? Yes. Um, I, the friend, uh, the Lansingburg Historical Society said yes, that they were interested in having, having that occur and they were fine with the, the friends going ahead and make, doing the application um, for it. So I connected the friends representative, which is Mary Muller and the representative from Lansingburg Historical Society so they could communicate directly. Great. Great. Is there uh, any role that uh, you see for the uh, committee or is it something that uh, you want to report out on or is it something that we can, uh, do we, should we carry this, continue to carry this on the agenda? I think so because it's not free, you know, it's not really finalized in terms of what will be occurring except, you know, that the decision that people are interested and, um, to pursue the, the plaque. And Paul, have, have you spoken with the staff yet on any ideas they may have? No, no, I haven't. So, you know, that, that portion, staff input is, is still open. So I would continue it as on our agenda. Okay. And uh, do you know whether they're considering a building mounted plaque or a pole mounted plaque? It's the blue and yellow plaques that the Pomeroy Foundation does. And so those are pole mounted, I guess. There would be a, a pole. A, my understanding is that there would be a pole on it. Okay. okay. Or for it, that it would be on. Okay. And is that the question you were asking? Yeah, sometimes I, I've seen plaques that are mounted on a pole out in the grass somewhere. And sometimes I've seen plaques that are mounted to the building. So this sounds like we're talking about a pole mounted are the blue and have you seen the blue and yellow on a building though, or has it been other kinds of plaques? Um, I, I would, I wouldn't bet money on either way. I, I have certainly have seen the pole mounted ones for sure before. Right. I, yeah. I wouldn't say it's so. okay. I did try to get one of these years ago. Um, I can't remember quite how long. Um, 
and of course the blue and yellow plaques were New York State. Um, it was a state project. And at the time that I had talked about it, uh, they said they weren't doing that anymore. So I don't know whether they started up again or what agency actually was, was uh, in charge of it. Uh, but this was oh, several years ago. My understanding is the application goes to the Pomeroy Foundation and that they pay for it. Yeah, well, that's different um, because it used to be the state just paid for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. Um, is there anything else on the Lansingburg branch that we want to update on, on a building perspective? I think it's doing well. <laughs> okay, thank you. So far. <laughs> Good. Good news. Good news. Uh, then uh, I think we have some general things to touch base on uh, work in progress at the main branch. Uh, the north and east wall repairs are, are in progress. And uh, uh, with Debrino, and I think they had anticipated finishing in June. Uh, does it look like that's still the, uh, the plan? Any updates you'd like to make on that? Uh, not really. They're still pretty much on track. Uh, hopefully to be largely done by the end of June. Um, and I haven't had any other, we haven't had any other issues. Um, so the work seems to be going along well. Thank you. Uh, last month, you mentioned that there was some potential additional work they were considering uh, regarding uh, foundation stones and things. Is that uh, well, developed that, any further? The additional work that uh, I was concerned with was uh, on the roof. And so the roofer that they're going to use um, is going to prepare um, an estimate for us on some additional work. So I haven't seen that yet. OK. Uh, and so are there funds available to address that, or do we, we have to look to find well, funds from another source? Or <laughs> kind of depends on the estimate. We do have, yes, of course, of we course. do have funds, um, you know, extra funds in the construction grants uh, uh, fund. Um, you know, and, and we, we could we could definitely do what I think is reasonable, um, you know, to be done up there for uh, a reasonable amount of money. Um, and and is, is that additional work, is that associated with the ice stands that were noticed previously or is this on the other side of the building? It's uh, mostly associated with the uh, roof that we put on uh, quite a few years ago, the RPDM roof. Uh, the patching and um, reapplying the roof to um, the parapet walls, uh, that kind of work so that it, you know, we don't get water seeping down into the, yeah. into the walls. Yeah, yeah. Certainly uh, roof repair work is, uh, it pays for itself twice. Or, you know, in fact, it doesn't deteriorate other things. So I, I think that's a good idea. I like it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, right. On our library construction grant uh, for the reading room, plaster, and the, and the kitchen floor, we can, had heard that had been funded by uh, state agencies. Are there any next steps that come up that we need to be aware of and planning for? Um, yes, I have not heard a word <laughs> from the state. Uh, we're still waiting for funding on that. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was. Uh, I, I thought I, maybe I misread that. I apologize. I thought I heard that it was funded and that was all award. I thought we said that last month. No. Uh, no, I don't. We don't have final approval on that. Okay, then I will have to uh, revisit my. That's what. Uh... That's what the funding says. It says, <laughs> okay, go. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that, and I apologize. I, 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 I didn't have that yet. I took poor notes last month, so I will uh, revise my notes from last month. So what, 
for actually saying that the uh, project is not yet funded. So have we been awarded the grant and we're awaiting DASNY approval or have we not been awarded the grant? What do you mean? <laughs> we, so, what does that mean in the context of the state of New York? Um, the, the grant has been approved by most everybody that needs to approve it. I think it's still sitting in DASNY's, uh, waiting for DASNY final approval. Um, they've gotten more energetic in the last couple of years. But uh, <laughs> I, I think, you know, you know technically, I, I don't think we have anything to worry about, but uh, sometimes they want us to, uh, you know, tweak things here and there. So can, can, for the record, can I say that the grant has been approved but has not yet been funded pending final DASNY processing? I guess. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Yeah, there, there, are, there are so many parties involved. I'm just thinking right. legal processes. Right. Is, uh... I think our, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think I remember that our hope was that we'd be able to do some of this work this summer, although it's not necessarily, it's interior work, it doesn't have to be summer work. Yeah, it um, could, be, could be any time of the year. <laughs> I thought, you know, I would have liked to have started that way back, you know, at the beginning of this year. Because, you know, with the weather, they could have worked inside. Could have got that right. done. And, and that actually may play in our favor being able to have some work, the interior work that people are looking for work in the off season. So that could be helpful. Okay. Uh, and I think we've have noted the uh, New York State Historic uh, Preservation Grant, League, excuse me, the New York State Preservation League grant uh, I don't think there's anything happening on an active basis there, but it is uh, just there as the HSR uh, process moves along and funds become we, uh, or need to be We have received uh, the 15,000 from the preservation league. Oh, so we've actually had received that, okay. Yeah. So uh, for the purposes of the agenda in the future, uh, shall I strike this item from the... Uh, agenda and we just know it's there for use when we need it. Do they have any other requirements? Not that oh. I don't know. Okay. They sent the money. <laughs> okay. I'll I'll take this off the agenda for future meetings so we don't uh, need to go over it every time. Uh, finally, I, I know the Gilded Age uh, filming is in progress. Could, could, I'm sorry. could we, um, oh, on the HSR, there was the question um, that's, that's that the, of the check-ins. That, so the, that's on page two, I think. Oh, there's a page two, sorry. There is a page two, yes. Okay. This is the preliminary pieces here. Page two is- I, uh, I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Uh, so is there anything on the Gilded Age that we want to report that is uh, relevant to the building? Uh, I, I see the uh, bike rack and the signs are still in place. Is there any, any uh, changes that we know of? Uh, um, yeah, everything uh, on our part is done. Um, Actually, the city took out the bicycle stuff did, uh, yesterday. Today. Oh, okay. Um, they got to move the planters out. And then, of course, uh, Heyday has to come in and move some other stuff, which I assume will be next week. Um, downtown is like a nightmare. Uh, you can't get anywhere. You can't park anywhere. <laughs> um, just, be, uh, just before they 
they, they rented the Sage lot, <laughs> the one that we used to park in. I, I had talked to Sage at the beginning of summer, you know, and I said, hey, can we park again this year? He said, sure, sure. And then, hey, they rented the whole parking lot. So there's no parking in the parking lot or the street or anywhere. Yes. <laughs> and you part, can, of the, part of the- you can't uh, get Half the streets. You know, did you ever see the, when they, they put down cobblestone on Second Street yesterday, a block up from us, and then stuff is like these rubber things. <laughs> and they put them down and it really looks like cobblestone. Yeah, these people are unbelievable. It's going to be um, very entertaining. <laughs> well, the, the Monument Square is now full of uh, yeah. <laughs> this much <laughs> soil. Uh, the parking garage and where I park down here is uh, fuller than it has been in two years. So it's uh, pretty amazing. So yeah, yesterday they had the uh, coaches and the horses out on Second Street, and you walk down today and you can smell the horses. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, so we're anticipating that filming will be next week, and they'll be doing uh, their events and the restoration. Okay. Uh, then, if it's okay with folks, I'd like to move on to page two of the agenda and uh, focus on a few pieces for the HSR. Uh, last time we spoke, I think last month, there was still, I think, I'm gonna take another quick peek here at my notes from last month, um, that the contract with uh, Misi Cohen Wilson Baker was signed, yes. And then it was a question about whether that had been sent to the Preservation League so do we know yet whether the uh, contract's been sent to the Preservation League? Yes, it was. That's why they paid us. <laughs> OK, got it. OK. So if I may, I'd like to share my screen and uh, do a quick review of the project schedule. Share screen. Oh, uh, Joy, may I share my screen, please? Sure, one second. Thank you. Should be all set now. Okay, let's see if this. Oh, yes, there we are. Very nice. Uh, let's do, I guess, this here. And uh, can folks make out the. Uh, can folks see my screen first? Let's ask that question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is the schedule put together by Misiko and Wilson Baker uh, a few months ago uh, for the entire HSR process. We are now here at the end of May, and uh, there are many tasks that have gone through. And uh, so they're in the process of uh, starting to uh, assess the issues and of physical damage to the building and make recommendations on that. Uh, they've also started the library space planning uh, review and analysis. Uh, we have the walkthrough uh, with Alex Cohen on site. That has already happened. So that's all to the left of the line. Uh, item I highlighted here is the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing recommendation report from Quantum Engineering. And uh, that is expected as a deliverable here at the end of this month. Uh, I did speak with uh, Gina earlier today, and Gina uh, said that they are still on track to do that, um, and that they would be looking to make a, uh, a preliminary uh, report to us for our review and consideration so we can start to talk about that and uh, work on setting what priorities uh, want to be 
uh, for uh, the report as we move forward. But I think we'd ask them to accelerate this piece so that we could use this here as a tool to potentially pursue a shovel ready project funding from the state. Has anyone heard any uh, anything, any details of this report or anything that they want to share out about that report? Okay, so I guess Paul, you'll be seeing something from uh, Misiko and Wilson Baker and from uh, Quantum Engineering on that uh, probably in the next few days, maybe after, immediately after the, uh, um, Memorial Day holiday here, or Labor Day, whatever, whichever one it is. Um, I, I did chat with with someone from Shippo, um, and I asked whether, since we we had an unfinished CFA award, whether we could apply for a new CFA. And I'm sorry, what is a CFA? Consolidated Funding Award. So the HSR is is funded by a, C, a CFA. Okay. Um, and he said he thought that the rule of completing one before being awarded another applied to construction and that we would not be precluded from applying this year because we had not yet completed the HSR CFA, but he also indicated that they're difficult to get. So it sounds like we'd be more likely to get funding either from the library construction or from some of the stimulus money. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, I thought that we had heard that there was there may be some funding coming through from the stimulus package. That was why we asked them to accelerate this uh, to try and maybe be prepared for something of that nature. Yes. But also because Paul needs to make application to the con for the construction. Got it. So there are multiple funding opportunities and we want to pursue them all. And hopefully this will give us some uh, tools to, uh, to move forward with. Now, Paul, you were going to make application to, for a member, for member money as well, is that correct? Um, not yet. Um, we haven't, uh, we're waiting to hear how that's going to work. Um, I haven't heard anything from Tim. Um, you know, he had promised to let us know, you know, what the procedure was. So we haven't done anything yet. Okay. Um, I will say, though, that the 2021 uh, New York State Public Library Construction Portal is going to be opening any day. And this may also be a piece then that we may want to put in for that as well, Paul? Um, well, that's, you know, that's a problem at the moment. Um, I don't really know. I got a couple of ideas, but I don't really have anything pinned down. One of the things I thought about was just uh, having uh, Debrino, while they're there, take a look at uh, either the South Wall or the West Wall and giving me an idea of what they think, um, how, you know, how they would tackle that. I mean, they're Masons, you know, it's a whole company is, you know, their whole um, business model is masonry. Um, and that's probably what has to be done. Um, so if they could take a look at it and maybe say what they think, and then go ahead and give us an estimate. I think that might be something to, to think about. I'm confused. So those walls are marble, right? Yeah. So do they do marble masonry? Well, yeah, it has to be held up there. 
It also has to be leak proof. So, you know, it, it involves masonry pretty well, pretty heavily. I think we probably want to get uh, Music and Wilson Baker involved in that piece here. I think that's part of their, one of their primary charges is, is the exterior facade of, of the building. Yeah, I, um, I would I would have them, you know, take a look at as well. Um, you know, but those areas are the big glaring problem at this point. Sure, sure. Other than, you know, other than the HVAC system, which we don't have. Right. Well, yes. the west wall and the south wall are just the big elephant in the room. Yep. Yep. We just want to make sure we're working toward a, a long term solution, not that we. Uh, uh, move sideways in some way. Uh, so I, I was. Uh, I also had thought about a you know smaller project, um, and I had mentioned that before. And I was actually looking for ways to go about that. Was um, replacing the uh, floor in the reading room upstairs. And I say replacing it, pull up those tiles, refinish the whole floor. Okay. Um, I, I will just, if you don't mind, a comment now as we're going through the construction grant project picking. Um, just in the back of our minds to remember the 90-10 possibility. Um, you're right, Upper Hudson will have to make the determination again of how that criteria will be in place for the 20, you know, this cycle. But just to remember that it's a possibility. And I, I, Evelyn, I think you're referring to the 90-10 uh, aid ratio uh, for exactly. projects that would be eligible because of the, uh, the library, uh, the community that we're in and the, uh, yeah. the larger context. Exactly, 90-10 versus the 75-25. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's a little bit uh, of a challenge to kind of um, shoehorn your project into the requirements for that 9010. Right. Um, it, they, right. Project has to be a certain size, it has to be a certain percentage of the total. Right. Um, 10%. So, yeah, it's a little tricky now. It goes to over 10%. To work. Right. Again, and the criteria, who I'm not sure if we're going to keep that upper Hudson, I should say, is going to keep that criteria. Uh, that's probably up for discussion again. It gets reviewed every year. But it, it's just to keep it in the back of our mind so we don't forget it as we're making those judgments. Okay. Thank okay. you. Let's take a quick look at the agenda there. Sorry. There we go. So we talked about the shovel ready products. Uh, part of what, um, Maria, I think, is it the uh, Historic Preservation League that wants to see draft reports, or is it SHPO that wants to see draft reports? My understanding is it's in the SHPO contract that so, there be some kind of check-in. I don't remember off the top of my head what kind, and it may be because I didn't understand what kind. Sure, and, and I wonder if we can use the uh, HSR, the, the, the uh, mechanical systems assessment, which is part of the HSR, plus a memo from Missy Cohen Wilson Baker as that progress report <laughs> to send to SHPO. Have you done that sort of thing before, Paul? Not really. Progress uh, reports or whatever? We do them for the, the state um, public library construction uh, grants, but they're very, very brief. Uh, um, Maybe that's all that's needed here. Yeah, I mean, they, they just ask you, you know, if you signed a contract or have you started the project or, you know, and you just say yes, no, whatever. <laughs> Um, so they, they don't they don't require a lot of narrative there. Um, I can check with Danielle. I got to check with her anyway because um, uh, Shippo has to 
process payments so that doesn't go through the, the grants gateway. So I will check with Danielle too on what else they might want to see. My, what I uh, heard was that they just, they wanted to make sure that the project wasn't going off in the wrong direction. So they didn't want to get to the end of the project and find that it wasn't what they wanted to see. Mm. But I'm sure Danielle can give you a better idea than, yeah. than that. And I think, what was it, 2040? There were maybe about four, four or five different points where they wanted a progress report. Yeah, I, I, they haven't requested anything, so I better touch base with them, see what they Yeah, it, they it's want. in the contract. Usually with the state grants, they send you the form and say, fill this out and <laughs> get it back mm -hmm. to them. Yeah, and I, just, and, yeah I don't know. Good. I'll have to check with them. Okay, thank you, Paul. So you're going to reach out to Danielle at SHPO and ask them. her what she wants and We'll pull something together for her. And I think we have some pieces from Misa Cohen, Wilson Baker that we can use to support that if there's, if they're looking for any specifics. Um, talking about the uh, space planning information gathering process and the workshops, uh, we did have the series of workshops on the 19th of May. Uh, Paul, I, I touched, I spoke with you briefly after the staff group met with uh, Alex Cohen and with uh, Misa Cohen Wilson Baker and I thought I remembered hearing that you thought that there was positive uh, conversation there. Do you have anything uh, any insights you want to share or any impressions from that uh, the main 19 May sessions? Well from a staff perspective I think we gave them an earful. Um, because of course the staff is, is are the people who have to work in the building and, and uh, they comment, they can comment very well on how well the building works or doesn't work. And so uh, no one was shy. Good. <laughs> we had lots of input and I think uh, Messick Cohen got a lot, of, uh, a lot of input and a lot out of it. Good, good. Uh... Do you think that uh, the staff are interested in, in uh, providing more input or what, what do you think? Uh, what? What's that? Do you think they, they, you think they felt that like they were heard? Do you think they want to have more sessions to have more conversations? What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I think they, yeah, they know they were heard. Um, I don't think that was an issue. Um, and uh, Larry, uh, Larry Wilson, uh, are both um, Alex and, and Larry both said that they would probably like another session with the staff. Okay. At some point. Good. Um, but we haven't, you know, we haven't scheduled anything. Yet. Right. Right. Okay. Good. Um, and Marie, or Evelyn, have you guys heard anything from the friends in terms of what their impressions were of that session on the 19th? Was that useful? Or did they think that this was a waste of time? Did they come back with uh, any things they shared with you that, uh, that would be important for uh, the consultants to hear? I haven't spoken with that many, you know, uh, but whomever I did speak with, and I don't remember who that was, they seemed pleased with the sessions and the ideas that were being considered. Okay, good. Good. Evelyn, any, did you have you heard anything? I have nothing to add. Sorry. Okay. okay good. I, I just make sure people are getting an opportunity to be heard and, and uh, make sure that no one's getting left out. Um, I, I did, uh, you know, I, I, I'm hoping that people are, feel good about it. Um, I, I, there was uh, the other piece of the information gathering then is, is the survey. 
There's the uh, electronic. Well, sorry, there was the board. There was the board too. Yes. And we had two members who weren't able to provide input. I was thinking that I'd reach out to them and see whether they'd like an opportunity to do so. But I haven't had the chance yet. And I'm sorry, I did not, I don't recall who was not at any of the sessions. Brianna was there, but she had to leave. She just asked a question and Bob was not there. So I thought I would contact the two of them and see whether they would have like to have an opportunity. Okay, sure. And, and perhaps just arrange a virtual session for the two of them with whomever from the MESIC team. Yep, and uh, Alex said he's open to that, participating in that as well. Uh, so I think that's good. Okay, thank you for bringing that forward. Um, we had talked about doing, getting a survey in place uh, before the next series of workshop meetings. Uh, we talked about doing an online survey and a hard copy of that survey. Uh, I know there were a lot of uh, you know, questions and review of the survey. Uh, I think my impression was that we had received, we had gotten to a, I'll say consensus on what the survey would contain. Uh, is there any update on whether that survey has been issued yet? Um, no, it hasn't. One of the issues that arose was the, for the hard copy, how that was going to be data entered. Well, I, I thought we were going to do the, I thought we were going to proceed with the online version and then uh, get the hard, well, then get the hard copy. Because I think, I thought we were going to say that, the, I thought, I thought we were going to proceed with the electronic version and I thought then we had resolved the hard copy format. And I was hoping to talk about the, uh, how we'd post the hard copies and to get that online. So uh, sounds like we've not gotten anything out yet. Is that what I'm hearing? That's correct. Okay. Um, but well. there's no reason we can't work out the rest of the process. So Paul, you were going to check to see whether staff would be available to data enter? Yes, uh, pretty much no. <laughs> um, and, so, and so I was gonna turn around and ask well, the question, uh, can the building- Administrative staff is really pressed for time at this moment and will be in through June and July. Um, and, and so I, I was thinking that uh, we really don't have a lot of time for several thousand hard copies to collate. Um, the online um, survey would be automatic, I assume. Would go yes, it would be. Uh, but the hard copy would have to be gone through by hand. And uh, right now, I'm afraid we just don't have that kind of time. And so uh, what I was going to ask this committee was if this committee would be prepared to individually volunteer to post five surveys hand hard copy surveys to the next uh, to the website per day or 10 surveys per person per day i don't think we're going to get thousands of email uh, hard copies back frankly uh, and if we do that's a great problem to have and we'll solve that but i i am i'll say i am prepared to transcribe five surveys or 10 surveys per day from a hard copy onto the digital platform. And I'm wondering if anyone else on the committee is also willing to do so. Um, no, I'm not sure, you're, you're gonna have to, I'm not sure how that works. <laughs> It, it, I, had, I thought hard copies would be passed out at the library, that sort of thing. Yes, they would be. But the actual they, pages, you know, that people would get, if they could access it on the internet, why wouldn't they fill it out 
in a in a digital format. Uh, some people find accessing on the internet hard. They would prefer to do a hard copy, which is great. They should. We would love to get their information. They would then return that hard copy to the library, and then I would come to the library and pick up ten copies. I would take it home. And I would put it into the computer myself, and I would then discard the leftover, the, the ones I've entered, and I would do 10 copies per day to transfer it from the hard copy to the website. Yes, Evelyn. Uh, hey, Jeremy. If someone showed me what needed to be done very clearly, um, I could take some time to do that. Thank you, Evelyn. That, that would be lovely. And, and I, I think you and I could learn together. And uh... <laughs> you know my lack of tech ability, right? I, I think you and I are, are at the same level, Evelyn. I, I am not a techie person. My impression and my impression is this should not be a, a techie. It should be go to a website, answer 10 questions, mm -hmm. and you're done. And I think I can do 10 questions 10 times by looking at someone else's answers and copying them. Um, and it's harder to do than that than the survey platform online is not a good platform. So I think we should be able to do that. Oh, we. Not to waste anyone's time here, but it sounds like we would go into the um, online thing and pretend we were somebody else. Got it, and put those answers in. Yes. Okay, now, we, had, we had planned to <clears throat> include it in our <clears throat> online newsletter that goes out uh, beginning of next week. Oh, good. Um, but that's like a digital format. Yeah. Not everyone so, does digital. That's okay. I mean, that's one way to get it out, right? That's one way to get it out. We need to do many yeah. ways to get it out. Then there's, uh, you know, I don't know. We have, you know, our automated library system has a lot of emails um, that we've sent out in the past, um, <laughs> which would make for pretty large scale uh, response, as far as I know. That'd be great. Um, I'm I'm sorry. My uh, my computer was running out of uh, charge, and I ignored it. So <laughs> thank, thank I got dis back on. got disconnected. Um, I was so engrossed in the conversation. <laughs> thank you for signing back on, Lori. I I think that we should use all avenues that they. The library has available. Uh, did you say you were going to put a button or something on the website? Yeah, we put it on the website as well. To link people to the survey for completion. Mm -hmm. um, what about for people who might not do the survey but might want to sign up to give input? Would there be something separate for that? Yeah, I, I, I said we were planning on sending it out to our online news in our online newsletter next week. Right, but that's not what I'm suggesting. I'm saying, will there be something on the library website to link to the survey? And would there be a separate capability to sign up for the workshops? Well, well we haven't gotten to the workshops yet. That's the second okay. piece. So, so let, let's, let's finish the survey piece first. And then let's let's loop back to the workshop piece then uh, for phase <clears throat> series two of the workshops. So I, I think uh, we said for the survey, uh, we're going to send it as part of the monthly newsletter next week. Uh, there's a there are multiple email lists that the library has, and I think Paul said that uh, we'd send the survey out electronically via the email list next week also. And I think I heard Paul say that we have a we're going to add a button to the Tory Public Library website to link to this survey. Um, I, we're probably going to do a post and then it will have, sorry about that, 
Um, we will have a link to that post to the survey and also in the same place we could put the information of how to register to go to your meetings if you want. So it's all in one. That, that sounds great. And, and uh, again, it probably gets, speaks to my lack of uh, um, technical prowess on this here. So maybe I'm not using the right terminology. When you say we have a post, uh, is that is that the monthly newsletter that we're talking no, about? No, it'll be it'll be in the on the front page of the website. Okay. So All those it. little chunks are called posts. Okay. And so we'll Annette will put it on there with the link to the survey that they can fill out. I'll even put out a, on a button that they can get a PDF if they would like to download it and print it themselves and bring it to the library. And then we can put down how they can register for any of the meetings you would like for them to attend. Okay, wow, okay. This is a multifaceted, multitask yes. uh, uh, link or post. Right. So, so May I, I see it before it, it's put into implementation? I'm sure, but I just need to know what you wanted to say. And, like the and I, and I'm 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 very concerned about getting this survey out. And if the Marie, if you want to, you know, dig into the the specifics of this here, then I'd like to suggest that we do separate posts for the survey and the meeting, uh, the workshop uh, sign up piece. I'm, I'm just concerned that if it's a post, which means, you know, uh, that it may lose visibility. At it'll, the be top. At the, it'll be at the front page at the right, top. But, but lots of times I can go to the front page and not everything is visible. Things are, are down below. Yes, I can control that. Okay. I can make sure that anything we want at the front, at the very top, will be there. Okay. We can keep stuff there. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, Joy and Paul. I appreciate that effort. And I, yeah, I think this will be short. It's going to be very focused uh, period of time. It's not that this is going to displace things over the, for the long run. I think oh, it's yeah. targeted very short sure. term. So I, I, that, I think that's great if that's possible to do. Yeah, that's absolutely no problem. And um, I just need what you want the post to say. Um, I can show you what I mean. Let's see here. Sorry to take your time for a second. No, no, please, please do not be sorry. This is all part of the, the uh, what we're here to, to solve and identify and work through. So I appreciate So we that. could put down, um, sure. We could put down whatever you want. Like this is considered a post. And we could put a button that says survey, we can have them register online, which will be a link, whatever you need it to say, and it could stay up here for as long as you want it to stay up there. Okay, because you can, you can see that our COVID policy is not visible currently. So that's my concern. Um, um, so you have to scroll way down to yes, see it. Yes, right, that's and, fine. And I don't, that's what, what my concern is. I, we need to continue to have it no need to worry, Marie. We will okay, keep it great. up here for you. Okay, great. So, so Marie, did that uh, give you, uh, uh, do you, do you have more input you wish to give on that piece of that process? Anything you um, want to review before it gets posted? You, know, you want to get some language you'd like to put together for that? I, I, don't, it, I haven't even thought so far as language. I was just more concerned that it not be right where it hits people in the face, so. I'm sorry, you do not want it to be where people hit people? No, I, I was more concerned that it wouldn't be. Okay, we, we do want it to be very prominent for yes. the short term. Okay. No problem. Would it be okay if uh, if I work with Joy in the language uh, so we can get that uh, finalized and get it out? Sure. Very yes, good. just please send me whatever you wanted to say and I will copy and paste it exactly how you want it and we'll put it on there. <laughs> um, Joy, I'll, I'll reach out tomorrow with, if that's okay. We'll, we'll touch base. Sure, uh, no problem. Tomorrow's Saturday. Tomorrow's, right. Tomorrow's Saturday. Uh, I'll reach out on Tuesday if that's okay with you. Yes. Oh, fine with me. Okay. And uh, we'll, 
Oh, and is that when your newsletter will be going out, Paul? Jesus. Um, it, it could go out on Wednesday. We could have um, Lori, who is a resident proofreader, look over everything to make sure everything is periods and capitalizations and spellings are correct. And then we usually send it out after she says it looks good. Okay, so the link to the survey on Tuesday and the newsletter on Wednesday. Wednesday, yep which includes all of the links to the survey, PDFs, whatever you want on there. Okay. I, I don't think we should include a PDF, but we can talk about that more. You guys just let me know what you want. All right. Thank you, Joy. Um, Marie, while you were uh, offline there, you may not have heard, uh, Evelyn and I have agreed that we will uh, collect hard copy versions of the survey that are turned in and uh, we will post, we will transcribe up to 10 surveys per day from hard copy to the digital platform. I, I think, and I think I talked with Paul about this, that we should encourage people to use the, I, I agree, the electronic version and have yes have hard copies in the library just strictly for those people who, who can't use the electronic. If they're looking at the website, they should be able to complete the survey online. I, I, yeah, that's I, what I, I was doing. And, and, um, I agree. And even, even in the library that, you know, the reference librarians could encourage them to do the electronic version. I, I agree with you. And that's why I volunteered to do up to 10 per day. I'm hoping that we don't get thousands and thousands of hard copies. I would be very surprised if we got thousands and thousands yeah, of hard copies. Well, part I'm sorry, of the, part Paul, of the, I, I missed that. Paul? What's that? We didn't hear what you last said. Oh, no, I, I, I just think, uh, you know, that will limit how many we really have to handle. Right. Um, you know, if we concentrate on having the hard copy available at the libraries. At both branches. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's that's a nice way to do it. And uh, we, we certainly want to hear people who uh, are completely uh, not able to use the electronic media, but uh, we want to encourage them to use it. But if they can't, we certainly want to hear what those folks have to say. So, uh, well, we'll so and, and that may, you know, pr produce an extra burden on the reference librarians if they have to help people get to the to the uh, survey paw i don't think so no i don't think that's going to be a big a big issue now alex seemed to think that we'd be lucky to get 200 surveys back yeah yeah i was certainly hoping for more than that well um i, I think paul speaking uh, uh alex was speaking from experience and, and knowing you know, that you know, there, there are core people who are motivated and interested and engaged and then there are people who are perhaps less engaged and so this is just one tool to uh, gather information and we find out who the engaged persons are so I think that's a win-win there so uh, hopefully this will give us information and it will also connect us with people who uh, want to be involved in, in this planning exercise. Uh, um, I, I, I'm very hopeful that we'll be able to get this here uh, moving very quickly here in the next week. That's good. So then that brings us into the, the next piece then, uh, which is the second series of workshops, uh, which we've been talking about doing the, on the Friday the 18th and Saturday, June 19th, uh, and with the idea that these would be in-person meetings at the library, uh, roughly broken into two-hour sessions. Now, now, Paul, there was, uh, I know we've, uh, there have been some changes in the uh, state mandates in terms of uh, occupancy levels and uh, requirements related to COVID. 
I was wondering if there are any updates uh, for us at the library in terms of maximum number of persons we can have at the library at one time. Uh, we really haven't changed that. Um, the, you know, the number has been uh, 25 and we continue to use that uh, starting next week when we go back to regular hours. Um, I think, you know, I'm somewhat concerned because um, we haven't started um, programs back in the library. Um, and uh, as far as I know, no other public library has restarted public programs. Um, <clears throat> so it's, it's <laughs> kind of, um, you know, difficult to schedule these and say, well, how come we can't do other programs? Um, how come we can do these with a whole bunch of people and not regular programs? And, and I'm, I'm, maybe the criticism we we would we would hear. Hmm, hmm. It, when we say pro, and I'm I'm not sure what the definition of a program is for one. Uh, but when you say 25 persons, is that including staff in that 25, or is that in addition to staff? Well, 25 people from the public, but that means in the building itself. Yes. Now the yes. building is 28,000 square feet. Um, yes. That doesn't mean in one room. Yes. You know, yes. which is much smaller. Yes. Yeah. So no, we it, don't anticipate 25 people in any of these meetings. <clears throat> I would like to see, you know, less than 10 in any one of these meetings. And so what we talked about was that they could break up into multiple sessions that would happen simultaneously in different locations in the library. So if they were groups of six or groups of 10, uh, you know, if we had three groups of six, that'd be 18 persons, they wouldn't be all in the same room. They'd be in different locations within the building. Well, I don't know. I mean, that's up to, um, up to Messy Cohen. I think that, you know, Alex would want to hear most of the session. And how do you do that? That's that's not that's not correct. It was, did speak with them about it and they, they said they were prepared to do multiple simultaneous sessions uh, up to three groups. And so that was their, uh, their strategy, you know, to, you know, to try and make sure that people can be heard individually, that you're not talking over people, uh, but that, uh, and to keep the group sizes manageable and also work within our uh, limitations. So I, I, I'm not sure how many, again, we're, I'm not sure how many people will express interest in coming to these sessions. Yeah, we don't know. But if, I mean, if we do get a good response, 30, 40 people, yeah, I mean, they could you know, break them up. It's just that you run out of space pretty quick. Right, um, right. You know, that's, that's 30 people would be manageable in the sense that, you know, 10 groups, three, you know, three groups of 10 people. Or, which would exceed our 25 person Maximum. So I think, well, yeah, in the building, right. 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 So I, I think that, you know, it, I think if we have a 25 person maximum, we're going to end up with a maximum of three groups of uh, eight persons each, basically. Yeah, but don't forget the library is also open. So, well, but, but if we find out in advance that people have signed up, then perhaps we've maxed out and maybe the general public can't come in during yeah. that time. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, we um, when we did the uh, community conversations, we got a pretty good response um, from people. I don't know the numbers. Yes, we did. But, uh, we got a, we got a. I don't know, Evelyn. Maybe you remember how many people were at those meetings, but uh, they seem pretty well packed. <laughs> well, well okay. let's let's we can see how we do. Maybe we can hold some virtual sessions that would be less limited right. in terms of numbers. Do you think? I, I do think, and I think we would have to do it as a sign up in advance uh, thing so that it can be managed. Uh, certainly we don't want to send out a, a broadcast and say, please come to a meeting and have 
250 people standing out in front of the library and saying, hey, we want to meet right now. Uh, that's we, we don't want to create uh, that false expectation uh, because it's not manageable at this time. Um, I think if we can say, please sign up, and we could say we could have up to three groups of eight persons, and that doesn't include uh, Alex and, uh, or that would include Alex and uh, Larry and Gina. So really, we can only have them plus seven guests or seven patrons. When we um, when we have programs at the library um, and you have to reserve a space, we also close them when we reach the maximum number. Exactly. So we can handle that. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I, I think if we, uh, I, I, part of the agenda here, I've put together a, you know, a couple time slots. Uh, this is after conversation with uh, Gina, of what their thoughts were. So on Friday, they're thinking uh, one session at one o'clock, one session at four o'clock and one session at 6.30. They were thinking each session would be two hours long. They were thinking each session could have three simultaneous groups meeting in the library. And there would be one of them for each of those groups. And that would mean that we could have seven persons sign up for a slot. That's, you know, that's their first uh, I'll say brush or first pass at this. Uh, we also talked about we want to have some uh, groups that are from uh, the city or city council. We talked about having the bid and uh, the upper library uh, association uh, involved in this here. I apologize, Evelyn. I know I didn't use the right term there, so I apologize. <laughs> um, do we um, want to say that the one o'clock session would be for, or maybe uh, one of the, uh, maybe all three of the groups that would need meeting at one o'clock might be from the city, the council uh, and the bid, or do we want to, Does anyone have any thoughts on that, on how that might be structured? I, I, I thought Alex said that he he uh, doesn't worry about segregating groups anymore. That he kind of and, goes and that, that's why I, I I proposed that the other groups were sort of general public groups. But I think right, I but heard... you could you could mix the city council people and the you know and other people together. We could clarify that with him. As well, to whether it, it, what that's what he intended, I, I, I did hear him say that, and I, and I did talk with Gina about not necessarily creating uh, um, segregated groups for um, all. I, I, I was just looking to create a time where we could do an invitation to uh, the city persons and the uh, city council. So certainly we. I, we want to make sure that some of these groups uh, sign up early, put it that way, that we, uh, um, I'm, I'm open to handling however you guys uh, want to uh, structure that. Evelyn, did you have any thoughts on it? As long as they don't, how do we put this? I remember an earlier discussion internal of was to keep ad like for the city, the city council and the administration separate. Personally, if Alex thinks mixing them is fine. And, you know, there's only so much time available to have these meetings. Now, I don't think the whole entire city council is coming even if invited, but, you know, we're looking at the number of people showing up again in one group. So teasing out some of that is how do you get the people you invite and not go over the number and. 
you know, not get into drama. We we could. Uh... You know, designate the uh, one o'clock uh, one o'clock slot, or or maybe uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm trying to think of how to describe this with words um, for city the city council in the bid. Um, we can send out the first invitations to them and let them sign up, and then if they don't sign up, we could open it up to the general public as well. Um, or we could say that uh, there are going to be three sessions at one o'clock and two of those sessions are for the city council and one session is for the general public. Um, we could then have a similar thing at four o'clock and uh, mm -hmm. try and create room space where uh, the uh, city participants and city council participants can come and be heard. Um, no press. This is not a public publicity event, but uh, an opportunity for them to be heard and that we can then uh, gather that information. Any thoughts or preferences, recommendations either way? I guess in the bottom line is whatever works to get the most input in the most logical um, method, you know, okay. getting it done and getting it done well. Now, I would rely on Alex's judgment also, because he's the one that's running them, one that is running them. Yep. And I would worry less about people feeling uh, left out than I would be about us getting what we need. And I think I was a little tone deaf uh, at our last meeting uh, when it was proposed that we have city council participate um, uh, as separate from uh, city government. So I, uh, I don't know what the dynamics are between those different groups and uh, how one manages that uh, that political environment. So there's there's a piece there. I don't quite know how to maneuver through either. So you know, I think you guys probably have more experience with that than I do. Well, and and in, you know, I think that when we're saying that too, that we weren't cognizant of, of Alex's uh, experience and preferences on this. Mm -hmm. We can we can confirm that that he doesn't care who's mingled mixed with whom else, but I, I would defer to him on that. Okay, and, and my conversations with Gina uh, were that he would, he does not mind mixed groups of, uh, or he prefers mixed groups of uh, participants so that people can hear a diverse range of conversation. And I'm, I would be concerned about people who would tend to dominate, but I would assume also that he is used to dealing with that and can handle it. That's a, a good point, I, I agree. Okay. Um, um, Christian, just a quick question, if you don't mind. Certainly, have one. Um, so we have, we talked about inviting community groups, specific community groups to come in here. Is yes. that for that kind of one o'clock invited or would a invitation go out and say, but be part of the general public? I think it would be a invitation to a targeted invitation for people to sign up for events that are open to the general public. And uh, if I may share my screen again, uh, it is this screen here, I guess, which then uh, this is the, uh, I'll say a more updated version of the stakeholders list, which uh, I sent out this in the email that went out this afternoon to you. Um, 
includes representatives of the city that have been identified, city council. Um, we can reach, I know who we can reach out to at, at the bid, or I have some ideas who we could reach out to at the bid. I think we've spoken with Freda and the friends. Uh, we can reach out to Mark Pattison. Uh, Evelyn, would you be able to reach out to uh, Tim Burke or, or Paul, would you be able to reach out to Tim Burke? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't see Tim as being part of the, of these groups. My understanding is he re is a representative of the ULHS. Right. So I consider that more internal. Um, I, didn't think, I, didn't, I didn't think we were distinguishing between internal and external. I, I thought we were. So for instance, all the staff, the board members, the friends were, were all on the first, in the first set of workshops. Well, Tim, Tim missed I, the first set of workshops. I think we can agree that. Right. That he, he was actually my suggestion. Okay. Uh, and so, what, so he could be, he could be totally separate. He has a different perspective that he brings, a kind of an insider's perspective. So he could talk with them as an individual and not part of the groups. Okay, we certainly can you know, set up a separate virtual event for him. Um, I would hate to de designate a whole two hour session just to him though. Yeah. So maybe a, <clears throat> a half hour session. Um, in, in person? Well, or a, a Zoom. Yeah, Zoom is, of course, a Zoom is, is absolutely possible, of course. Right, uh, was more what I was thinking. I just think he has a, a an overall perspective on the libraries in our, our district that may provide some insights as well, which is why I suggested him. Okay, I'll correct the spelling later. Um, I think there were, you know, some program instructional groups that were identified, perhaps. Um, I think, Paul, you've got some contact lists here that would be covered as part of your uh, email broadcast. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I got a list. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank <clears throat> you. Uh, the uh, historical groups, uh, I don't remember who it suggested uh, the historical review committee might have been. Oh, look at that. I'm highlighted. I thought it would be good to have a representative of the historic review committee for the city have input. Okay, so, so you, um, you'll, you'll reach out to them? To Chris, sure. Great. I, I sort of have already, I mentioned it to him at the friends group. Great. Um, I told you, I, or, well, I guess I didn't tell you. I um, talked with, I, at the bid board meeting, I mentioned the survey as part of the historic structure report. And I okay. asked that members be willing to share it with their membership and also uh, to come and, and talk so if they were invited to do so. Do, do you want to reach out to the bid then? Interface sure. Well, it's person. the bid I was going, I think the person that should be reached out to is Katie Hammond, okay. the director. Okay. Do you, do you to want to reach out the to bid. her or do you want me right. to reach out to her? I, no, I, I, can, <laughs> I can do it. Um, right. And also another person was the chamber and I can reach out to the director of that. Okay. Um, who else? Mm. Troy Seniors, I don't know who Lavinia Marie Fuchia, Fuchia? That Fuchia? was from, uh, um, Uh, Is that from the Office of the Aging or the Senior Centers? Um, I don't know. It was It was Jerry, Jerry recommended uh, 
mm -hmm. the, this person here. So I assume Jerry will reach out to those people. I know the Troy Housing Authority. Jeff Morrell, um, and it's, Again, there's, there's yes. no I, no second I in that. He, oh. um, he already provided input as part of the strategic plan. So, but I don't know that uh, that uh, Alex or the team had heard him. So I think. It but they should have access to the strategic plan, and it might be better to get input from somebody different. Maybe Sam Judge. Uh, okay. Uh, you want I, me to uh, talk with Jerry about that? Uh, I, I actually, I would. I'd like to talk with you offline about Sam Judge, please. Okay. Well, but. Okay. I, I think we don't want to be limiting who we invite. I think we should invite everybody and then people who sign up, sign up. And if we try and not invite people, um, we may end up with having open slots. I'd rather deal with, oh, we have too many people signed up and if we have too many people sign up to meet in person, we can always meet virtually. So I, I think we need to invite everybody who wants to participate. And I suspect we will get fewer participants than we are looking for. But yep. maybe, maybe we'll have the opposite problem. And if we have the opposite problem, I think we will, we'll have to deal with it when it happens. But uh, just because somebody gave input a while ago, I, I think we should not not invite them for the future. My personal opinion. Uh, does anyone want to reach out to these folks here? I know Nora McDowell, I can reach out to her. I could check in with Shauna. Okay. Marie, you want to reach out to the League of Women Voters? Sure. Okay. Now, we may have already gotten a great deal of input from them as part of the Friends. Many of them are also in the League. Got it. Got it. Well, and perhaps these people really enjoy going to meetings. I, I don't know. Maybe they say, well, I already did this once and don't need to do it again. So we'll see. I can reach out to uh, the Troy Schools. I know uh, Christine Nealon. Okay. Do you want to try um, Patrick Doyle? Patrick Doyle, let's see. I'm sorry, Evelyn, I don't see, I don't. Troy's Boys and Girls Club. He's your oh, evening. there we are, thank you, yes. There we are. Thank you. By the way, can you send out, before I forget to ask, could you send out this updated task list? Yes, yes thank I you. will. Yes, okay, I will. Thank you. Good, good question, good question. I'll, I'll reach out to Patrick and uh, Monica. Oh, that Patrick. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can do Steve. Okay. Or did you want to do him? No, no that's fine. If you, if you, uh, I, I know him to call him, but if you know him better than that, Chris, have a good night. And I understand city council's got uh, a web address, an email address. Is that is? Um... Mm -hmm. They have both the, the one that you see there. And I believe that they also have individual addresses. That's correct. And so if anyone wants to reach out to any of them individually, I would encourage anyone to do so. Uh, I can send the general email. 
and there's a couple I know personally I could reach out to, but uh, I don't know them all personally. Does anyone know any? Does anyone know everybody? I do. Do you want to reach out to them, Marie? If you want me to, I will. If you know them, uh, I think that's uh, a personal invitation is always better than a a general invitation. So if you can do a personal one that and they know you, that sounds great. I think in, under the city, we should also invite the economic development director. And who is that? It's um, Dylan Turek. He he is under Steve, but Monica is you know is under Patrick and Steve is under Monica. So <laughs> okay. Um, I know we came up with this list. And I'm really sorry, but it just occurred to me now to think just asking, not suggesting even. Um, what about some of our county legislators? Our representatives? Um, I mean, the They're not city, but they're Trojans. You know, um, no, and they represent the city, right? So it just the, it, it just the six the people. six uh, Democratic legislators <laughs> represent the city. Right. Um, how about Patrick Grimm? Or oh, Patrick uh, Peter Peter Grimm. Sorry. Well, there's Peter Grimm, Cindy Doran, Carol Weaver, um, Mark Fleming, Mark Fleming, and there's someone Who else. else. Two more, right? I can't remember. I'm sorry, my typing is not that fast. I, I've got two out of the four you mentioned, or six you mentioned. So are, we can't remember are, the day. Evelyn, are you saying that we should invite all six? Well, I think if you're going to do one, you have to do all. Well, personally, I don't. I don't feel that way. But so, just put down six six uh, county legislators. And I'm sorry, I, it just occurred. I don't know why it didn't occur to me before. No problem. Um, and who would like to reach out to them? Do you know them, Evelyn, or do you want me to do? I, I know Carol. Um, who else did we talk about? Well, Peter Cindy Grimm. Doran, Mark Fleming. Right. Peter Grimm is interesting. We've been introduced several times. Um, I, I saw people my kids went to school with on his porch once during the um, garden uh, tour. And I swear to God, he just doesn't remember who I am at any time, each from time to time. So Carol's I, the only one that I'm comfortable, uh, you know, I'm, yeah. I have, I'm in communication with. Uh, I know, I know Cindy, I know Mark, I know Peter well, because we worked together on some projects. A little bit, especially the garden tour. <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to reach out to the Historical Society? I see there's no one for that. I can reach out to Denise, I know her. I work with her on projects. That'd be great. And, and Paul, you're okay hitting these uh, program groups? As part of the, uh, the former yeah, email I list. Yeah, I've got a um, list of contact people for those. Okay. I'm going to have to leave here pretty soon. <laughs> Okay, well, I think we made you know really good progress with this. Now, um, are you uh, going to do uh, Mark Patterson? Yes, I will. Kristen? Yep. Didn't, and, and, and I think, I, will, I'm sorry, I, think I said I would do the chamber rep. I'm pointing here. That doesn't do much good. Does it? <laughs> yeah, I had your name. Oh, I guess I have your name here for. Oh yeah, I think I have you here. Yes, I got you. Oh okay, so yeah, it's there twice. Okay. You're going to reach out to the bid and to the chamber. Right. 
they're both, you know, they're both on the bid board with me. Okay. And um, Evelyn, will you reach out to Tim Burke? Sure. Okay. And you know, we'll certainly make it possible for Tim to have a individual Zoom session uh, where he can speak uh, his mind as fully as he'd like, if that's what he would prefer. Well, I, I, I think he might be hesitant to speak his mind if it were, you know, in a more pu public venue. So I think, yeah. You know, not only does he have a systems um, viewpoint and know uh, many of the libraries, he was the uh, executive director of the Albany Public Library when it went through some transitions. <laughs> so, well, I didn't realize that. I, I thought I had thought he was the assistant director. I thought he was a director. Well, you may wrong. well be right. I'm, I'm just. That's how I've heard the story, but. Uh -huh. Well, certainly he'll have some insights to share Tim, that'll be valuable to hear. Partly from Tim, partly from others. And I would guess that the kids and teens and parents uh, would fall under the patrons section. And so really the question is then how to reach some of the non-current patrons. And I think, you know, reaching out to some of these other groups here may actually address some of the non-current patrons. Does that, is there anyone else we'd like to add on to this list at this time? Well, I thought Grace Rial would be, be a good patron because she, remember, she was the one who came to the board meetings and expressed feedback. And is Grace uh, on our library uh, email list? Probably. So are you thinking that you'd like to extend a, a separate invitation beyond the, the library invitation? Yeah, just because she, you know, I think she's somebody who indicated that she does have things to say about yep. what she'd like to see in the library. Yep. Um, as far as reaching other patrons, uh, both Evelyn and I have tried to do so in the past, but I can, I have some lists and uh, that I can send out the, the survey and invitation to. Well, that'd be great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, and also I'll contact John Salka and ask him whether the city can send it out as well. They've sent out things in the past and also the bid. We're a bid member and I'm going to ask them to send it out in their news blasts that go out. Okay, that'd be great. I think you know, the more uh, the more right. we cast our net, the more we'll find out. Yeah, I'm, uh, and that may be a good way to get non-patrons um, yeah. to complete it. So I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll get more than 200 surveys, but it's hard to tell. Are there institutions? Um, well, I know the, the city is definitely not just downtown. The bid is downtown. That right. but are not centralized, you know, downtown that could send out this kind of email blast too. I, I'd really like to hear from other neighborhoods, um, other areas that aren't you know, that close to the library, physically close. Well, if we, if we ask the neighborhood groups mm -hmm. to share it, that would be a way to reach out to other areas in downtown. I think even though the bid may is is for a certain area in downtown that their newsletters may go to people beyond that. Um, there, I know you're a board member of the bids mm -hmm. and know it better, but I for trying to remember what it was that I asked of the bid and they basically said, no, we, we only do things for those who are a members be downtown well and the well, library the library is a a member a member right and, and, I, and I think the the distinction there is that 
who they do things for is one thing, but who they send things to is a different thing. And uh, they may do things for us, but they, I think they're, who they're sending things to is much more expansive than just that small right. list. But I hope you understand my, my kind of perception here, is yeah. this perception that if there's other ways of, yes, going to the neighborhood groups and if they have some sort of uh, communication, I do know that like the Lily does, Riverside does, Sequoia sure. does not. <laughs> well, um, well, Evelyn, I, I, th I think you should feel, we should all feel comfortable asking our uh, uh, groups that we are connected to, that we know, uh, to uh, that are Troy based to participate in this process. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you say you say that Sickway does not, but Sue Steele seems pretty active. Maybe oh, maybe she could send it out for Sickway. She's definitely active, but there's no neighborhood group. Okay, I thought she was trying to get something going. Okay, well, you know, I agree with Kirsten that whatever avenue that we can think of to get this promulgated, we should do. Okay, well, I'll, I'll clean this up here and I'll send it out and I'll include uh, Jerry on this as well. Uh, she's the one who offered these names. And I assume that she's going to be comfortable reaching out to them. Um, uh, and uh, I'll share it with the entire uh, board and we'll see if uh, people are uh, able to do that. Okay. Um, I think, let's see. We talked about having multiple sessions at once, up to three sessions, not more than 25 persons in the building uh, at a time beyond staff. Now, I didn't hear the answer to the question about um, using the library on the, on the Saturday. You would ask Paul whether whether that was possible. And I think he responded that he wasn't available. And then you said, would I, I, that pre preclude, did, was there an answer to that? I, and I'm sorry, that's a good question. Paul did re write back and also that he was not personally available on Saturday, um, but that did not preclude the event it was the, uh, or the, uh, the library from being open at that time was my understanding. And Paul, I the 6.30 session that was mentioned for the the Friday, the library would be closed then. Will that be a problem? Um, not any more than usual. <laughs> Somebody has to, depending on when they want to start the actual meeting. Um, I think their objective is, is to be very focused now, 6.30. If you, get people, if you get people in before we close, that's fine. Otherwise we've got to we'll monitor the door. Um, perhaps we could make it six o'clock. What time? We'd still, we, there still is an issue though, as far as people straggling in late. Yeah, um, as I say, we'll probably have to monitor the door. And I, I apologize, I don't know what, what time does the library close on Friday? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Oh, it's, it's oh because it'll be back to normal hours, right? Right. But. <laughs> one good thing or the on the other side there won't be other members of the community in the library <laughs> right nor large numbers of staff so you can have larger groups that then okay so we'll work that out it's workable then correct paul yeah okay okay thank you thank you for your help with that okay um well, this has been very helpful. I really appreciate it. Uh, we, they did say we can have additional uh, virtual stakeholder meetings act of 19th. You know, if we get lots and lots of interest and these are all fill up, uh, we can do additional meetings after that virtually to uh, supplement. So I, I think we can create opportunities for people to be heard and for uh, ACA and, and uh, Misako and Wilson Baker to hear uh, what 
our Troy constituents uh, have to say about the library and what their hopes and aspirations are for the building itself and what their challenges they see. So uh, sounds like we've got a, a process here that is, uh, I'll say, coming together. Um, are there any concerns about or thoughts about what we've spelled out so far? Uh, things that we should add to this that we haven't considered? Okay. Uh, anything else we want to talk about else beyond uh, the historic structures report, beyond the things we talked about already? Okay. Uh, then our next meeting, our next regular meeting would be scheduled for the 25th of June as a committee at four o'clock. And um, if there are no objections, then I would suggest we wrap this meeting up. Okay. I think everybody's anxious to leave. Oh, no, I'm waving goodbye. <laughs> yes, yes. Have a very nice weekend, everybody. Enjoy. Thank you so much for uh, your thoughts on this here. Thanks for helping to pull this together. I'll clean these notes up. I will get them together and get them out. Uh, I'll get them out on Monday for okay, everybody. Thanks, okay. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Thank bye -bye. you so much, Joy. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay,